Musa Kumalo is my guest today on Future Cities Africa. He's chairperson of the Risk and Audit Committee at the Gauteng Department of Economic Development. He's also the group head for shared services at the city of Tuane Metropolitan Municipality. Musa, welcome. Can you take us on a quick tour of your background and your current work? Thank you again, Dan, for the opportunity. My background is largely in, in financial management and, and risk management. I've been a chief risk officer in some of the uh, government institutions, but my current role is that of a group head for shared services at the city of Tony. Uh, mainly in the main is just to run corporate uh, shared services support departments and mainly uh, in the ICT space. So part of the, of, of the responsibility includes the running the information communications technology of the city, the fleet, the vehicles uh, of the city, the postal services, the GIS, uh, geographical information system of the city, and, and a couple of more other functions that are run at corporate level. So that's what we currently, I'm currently doing at the moment. Before I get into some of the smart initiatives at the city of Tuane, I would like to understand what your definition of a smart city in a South African context. I'll say that, that a city that is able to interact better with customers. So while traditional, so I'll make a distinction between a traditional city and a smart city. So a traditional city, it's a city that will operate nine to four, if you're lucky, and people are not living at three. A city that uh, runs in a very analog way, so paper-based systems and uh, uh, lengthy approval processes. Contrasting that to what a smart city should be, really, it's a city that must interface better with citizens at any time of the day. Uh, in different channels that citizens want to access government opposed to uh, running into customer care centers and all of that. So those who want to interface with you through their cell phones, they must be able to do so. But it also must be a city that is built for the future because uh, with the 4IR and all of that, the cities will compete in the future on uh, things like technology base, the ability to, to, to attract investment will largely be on how a, a, a city accommodates things such as 5G networks, 5G infrastructure, and so on. So it is, it is largely one, the ability to transact with customers and interact with customers in various means, but also just the ability to build a city that will survive. In, in, in the future. So that, that will be my, 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 my definition of a smart city, contrasting that with the traditional uh, way that cities were run. The city of Tuane is doing impressive work on smart city related projects and initiatives. Can you highlight some of these initiatives and explain why they are important? There are a few initiatives that the city has uh, implemented in its quest to become a smart city or a smarter city. One of that uh, is, is the platform that we pride ourselves on, which is our online uh, uh, platform called Itswane. It's a platform that just allows residents to engage with the city uh, electronically from the comfort of their home or their work. So the solutions that we've been able to put their solutions around, being able to, to transact in terms of payment of uh, services, being able to upload meter readings. For example, some people are not able to be at home when meters are read. So there, there, there is a way that you can do that. Lodge, uh, lodge uh, queries as well. Uh, we've added some of the functions over the last two years or so. Part of them include apply, applying for clearance certificates, uh, uh, applying for other services such as water connection, electricity connection, We've also put in our investment platform there. So that's one of, the, of our flagship uh, projects that we've put in, in, in place just to, to, to allow for the discussions that we spoke about earlier that outside of the normal uh, government hours, people can be able to transact with the, with, with, with the city. We've also put in a number of other online platforms like the electronic way leave uh, application system. So developers and everyone in that space can be able to apply, uh, 
get refunds on deposits that they put in when they apply for way leave, as well as just uh, 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 many other submissions that can be done around the, the, the processes of apply, apply, applying for, for way leave. Uh, we've tried to late a WhatsApp channel. Part of it is just to extend the services that are on the e on the on, on the WhatsApp uh, platform. We, we've looked at different ways in terms of whether we, do we need another app or so on. Uh, we, what we've seen on the research, this research are suggesting is that even on a normal smartphone now, people have at least about 70 to 80 apps. So there is not always an, an, an appetite for people to download another application, especially if they're just using it to, to interact with the government that sometimes they don't like. So uh, we, we've put in a, a WhatsApp channel, which will allow now for viewing of statements, uh, for uh, uh, accessing some of the electronic, electronic forms that otherwise will be able to only get them through walking into the office or getting them on the, on the website so you can easily navigate to get uh, some of those forms there. The aim is that we grow that into replicating some of the services that, 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 that are in, on each one to be, to be on the WhatsApp channel. There, there are other initiatives that we've done that are inward looking. So what I, I was speaking to, it's initiatives that are a customer uh, facing and maybe the last one that is worthy to mention is our Wi-Fi program. Uh, it's, it's quite a, a, a popular program. The city runs about uh, 1,100 hotspots around the city. Uh, our citizens can get up to one gigabyte a day free on a, on a, on, on, on a hotspot. Uh, so it's, it's a service that, that, that is available in many respects. Uh, for people to be able to 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 access uh, uh, internet at a service that is free, so people can apply for jobs and 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 be able to access opportunities that otherwise would have been at a cost. And uh, we've seen as well there are a lot of online learning and all of that, so we, it has been able to be an alternative to uh, buying data and so on. So we have the Wi-Fi program. So those are some of the programs. There are some that are still in the pipeline that are still awaiting resolution from courts like the broadband project where the vision is around seeing if it's possible to have a wall-to-wall -wall coverage of fiber in the city that is of a carrier grade uh, uh, quality which uh, because really our, our thinking is around that from the studies that we've seen is that investment in IT has been proven to have a very strong correlation to economic growth and, 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 and increased economic activity. So that's the idea behind all these uh, uh, IT initiatives that are, 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 are public facing. And in terms of just internally the institution, there are a number of things that we're trying to do. Some of them will solve the way that the municipality work, but uh, Entirely, it will also help in terms of how citizens uh, engage with the with the city. We've tried things such as uh, electronic document management system, which just helps us in terms of managing uh, records of the city. But it also, even though it's inward facing, it also helps in terms of community accessing records of the city. They are easy to retrieve and so on. So those are some of the initiatives amongst many that the city is implementing Towards, towards being a, a, a smart city. It sounds like the uh, city of Tuane is already living in the future. Uh, why has Tuane been so successful with their online or e-service? Uh, how have they managed to do so much more than some other municipalities at this stage? I think, yes, uh, our, our platform is, is used a lot. We now, just in terms of collections, uh, we, we collect at least about 90 million uh, per month. Uh, of our rates through that particular platform. We have about 6,000 customers that are added in terms of account every month uh, on, on average. So I think that part of it, it's, 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 yes, it was one of the first. So we were way ahead of, of everyone. I also think that the issue as well of making the platform to not just be a means in which you collect revenue. It's, it's an important in terms of being an avenue for people to collect uh, revenue. But what we've done as the city, we've expanded it beyond 
just a, 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 a service where if you think about how internet banking was before, it was just a platform to view your accounts and no one used it as much as now that you're able to open an account, you're able to lodge queries and all of that. So if you look at how internet banking is used now, compared to before it has grown. And, 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 and the reason in my view is that you, they've, you, they've, the banks have been able to change internet banking just beyond viewing of statements and so on, because you can only view a statement so much. <laughs> your balance is the same. If the same today and tomorrow, you're not going to use the service the other day. But if you're able to offer other services, such as lodging queries, uh, clearance certificates, applications. So the more you put onto the platform, the more it's uses, uh, the more you're going to get people that are going to, to use it. So we, we've looked at, at that as an alternative way of customers engaging with us. And, and that is where I think that, that we've been able to, to the, the thing that I was speaking about, reading of meters and all of that. So our platform is not just a platform of viewing statements and making payments. It's a platform of how we interact and engage better with customers. And that, that has enabled us to have a much better traction rather than if it was just a matter of, uh, of viewing statements, as, as, as I said. Are you able to share some information on the amount of, of people using the platform or just kind of the, the monthly increase in, in users of the E2A platform? The, our E2A platform now has about 300,500 users and about 481 accounts. So some users have two or three accounts, some they rent out properties. So it's, it's about 300,000 users, which is, is quite a strong number. Uh, we adding about on average 4,000 users, additional users, and about uh, between 6,000 to 7,000 accounts. It's increased largely uh, during the lockdown, uh, the numbers, because there were times when services, uh, because of the levels, could not be accessed through physical contact. So some of the numbers, we, we've seen a large increase uh, over this particular time. We have about between 27,000, 29,000 payments that run through uh, the, the system. So those are multiple uh, payments that run through the, the, the month. Uh, on average, about now between 70 to 80 million that's collected through the system. We also have about between uh, 60,000 to 68,000 meter readings where people upload their own uh, meters. The target is still to, 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 to increase that. So those are, are some of the numbers that, we, that we're seeing through. We're tracking numbers as well of clearance certificates applied for, and uh, as well as numbers on a application for new electricity connection, water uh, connections. But the large numbers are the, the ones that are on the on the on, on the payment side on the uploading of, of meter readings and uh, then minimal yet on the application of, of clearance certificates but we continue to to monitor that uh, and 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 it, the numbers continue to show increases on a month-to-month -month basis um it's very impressive the numbers uh, where do you see e going uh, over the next year the next two years and the next five years do you, are you planning on expanding the services if so what kind of plans do you have we we are planning to extend the services on e uh, just this year we've started the process of of adding the interface and, 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 and for online applications for building on the building side. So, it, so whether you're applying for, for a piece of land or you are tracking your application where it is in terms of approval, that will interface with the deeds offices as, 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 as well. So that is, that is one a, a platform as part of the each one that we're unlocking in the, in the current year. But we, we're looking at other services that we are going to, to add, uh, such as a booking of halls, a, a symmetries, a online application for, for, for all those particular services that currently are accessed through walk-in centers. So all of that, we, we're trying as much as possible to see that we replicate. So th there are plans around that. Uh, there are other ideas that we're thinking about, uh, such as uh, online renewal 
of vehicles. Uh, it's it's a, it's it's it will need to interface with R RTMC. So we're still just in talks around whether that it, it is possible to interface the two uh, databases. But uh, we we're hoping that we're going to have fruitful discussions because that that is one of the services that people walk in a lot uh, to do to renew licenses to renew a vehicle registration. And we think if we're able to do that on the it's on the platform integrated to career services, people will be able to renew vehicles without having to go to the post office and, and, and so on. And uh, especially for services such as that, that have a transaction fees, because whatever investment you put in is able to pay sort of it, it subsidize itself. So those are some of the, of the services that we're looking at. There, there are a number of services that we're already activating from the emergency services site, such as uh, applying for, for permits, for certificates, and so on. So we're going to also increase and, and continue with, 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 with that. So there's, there, there are a number of things. We, we plan to improve the platform because we've seen that if, if we can really get the 300,000 users or so engaged, it will help a lot to alleviate pressure on working centers, on call center, and, 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 and so on. So those are the plans uh, that we have around the platform. Uh, if you promise me that I won't be standing in the queue, I'm, I'm probably going to have to relocate. Are you seeing a reduction in the amount of people that are actually using the call center? Yes. Uh, I may not pull out the stats now, but what we've seen, we've seen a reduction in the nature of some of the, of the calls, especially where we've availed things such as online forms and all of that, even on the WhatsApp platform, because just we've been tracking the, the the WhatsApp platform over the last three months or so since 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 its launch, we we have about twenty seven thousand now active users that we that that we've seen, and and where where people will just call in the call center to ask for a form, whether for a new a refuse bin and so 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 on, those particular queries we've seen the reduction in in the nature of those particular calls. But uh, maybe uh, in our follow-up discussion, we can start maybe sharing things such as statistics and all of that. But we do uh, track the nature of the calls and so on. And we've seen even maybe even just the majority of the calls, because what we want is that what really comes through the call center must be things that people are not able to solve by themselves. And what we've seen is that the queries that are starting to come through are queries where there are sophisticated issues on accounts and so on. So it's not just people calling in to ask about what is the number that they dial for this, what is the form that they need to fill for this, because that information is starting to be available through all these platforms. What do you see the city of Tuani looking like 20 years from now? What are you hoping to see and what are some of the things that we need to get in place now to fulfill that vision? Thank you. I think part of, of, of what we Thank you. I think part of, of, of what we want is we, we've looked at the smart city, we've broken it down into about five forms. And the first part that we're trying to sort out is the safe city concept, because what we've seen is that if we're not able to make the city safe, it doesn't matter what else that we're trying to do, because the, the people that you need to be in your city are going to be driven out the investment is going to be out and you're not going to have the revenue that will, will fulfill all the other ambitions that you have. So our first approach is that the city must be a city that is very safe. So in 20 years or even less, there must be a, it, 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 the, the city must have wall-to-wall -wall camera network that assists us in terms of picking up uh, criminal trends, that assists us to improve the response, whether... It is, it is a, a, a criminal activity that is taking place or an accident. The, the smart cameras now are able to pick up movement of people and so on, and you're able to then improve the response of your, of your, of your security uh, providers, whether from police or from emergency services. So that is one part that, that, that we're looking at. The second part is, is around what we're speaking about, access to, to government. So in 20 years, really what we, we, don't, what we want to see is, 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 is just 100% interaction with 
the municipality on these particular platforms. We don't believe that there will be a need for people to be walking in and, 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 and so on. Uh, we looking at some of the, of, of the waste intervention. The city uh, is current landfills uh, will be filled in the next 10 years. And from what we've seen throughout the world is that there's just going to be no space to put in waste. So some of, the, of, of, of what we're hoping to see in 20 years is a city that is able to smartly manage its waste, sort its waste at the source. Uh, so your, your vehicles must be able to speak to how your, 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 your waste is, is, is kept and isolated at household uh, level. So that is another dimension of, of, of a smart city that we want to see. And, and lastly, as I said, that the investment is largely going to be around how your ICT infrastructure is. So we've seen that in 20 years, driverless cars are going to, to be quite a, a, a big percentage of, of the vehicles on the road. So what it means is that your traffic lights must be geared towards a driverless vehicle. It means that your 3G network, and so on, everything that supports IoT devices, the numbers that we see and we're going to see in 20 years, you must have the right uh, environment. So we're trying to create that envir enable environment now uh, through these particular strategies and plans that we have. So we've, we've, we, we're looking at different segments of, the, of, of our smart city strategy and we, we're trying to imagine how the world will look like in 20 years and then what are the things that we need to start do it doing now and 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 they're underpinned by some of the initiatives that I'm speaking to